Good afternoon, everyone. Today, we are going to discuss one of the largest organs of our body, that is the skin. Skin conditions are one of the main reasons for seeking primary health care. However, dermatology is a topic that often appears at the top of prim uh, primary health care providers' educational need. And we are going to address this need through today's webinar. I, Dr. Rahul Mandlik, welcome you all on behalf of Shalina Healthcare. This is 13th webinar under Shalina's webinar series that comes under our SPEED initiative, that is Shalina's professional engagement and education to connect the Africa's healthcare community. Brief overview of Shalina Healthcare. Today, we are one of the largest pharmaceutical companies in Sub-Saharan Africa. And from last 35 years, it is our mission of making high quality medicines at affordable prices and to make them available across Sub-Saharan Africa. And we achieve this by manufacturing in our own WHO approved facility and through our unique end-to-end -end supply chain. With this, let me welcome our today's speaker, Dr. Anil Ganju, who is going to talk about the basics of routinely seen skin disorders. Dr. Anil Ganju is a renowned senior consultant dermatologist, dermatosurgeon, laser and aesthetic physician from New Delhi, India. He is a president of Sark Association of Aesthetic Dermatology. Dr. Ganju is a past vice president of India's largest association of dermatologists, venerologists and leprologists, that is IADVL. And sir is a recipient of prestigious Dr. Sardari Lal Memorial Lifetime Achievement Award. Dr. Ganju has been awarded as an inspiring dermatologist of the year in 2019 by Economic Times and in the preceding year as the dermatologist of the year at Dermatology and Allied Specialties Summit. He is also recipient of IAD, IADVL President's Appreciation Award in 2017. He has got experience of heading departments of dermatology in several prestigious medical institutions in India. He is a faculty of at International Master Course on Aging Skin Congresses. And Dr. Anil Ganju is reviewer of Journal of Cuteness and Aesthetic Surgery. Sir has written many chapters in several textbooks of dermatology, cosmetology and lasers. So audience, while you attend this webinar, please feel free to post your queries and stay back up to Dr. Ganju's presentations because we will discuss some of your commonly seen queries during Q&A session. Over to you, sir. Uh, OK, thank you, Dr. Rahul. I hope my screen is visible. Yes, sir, your screen is visible. I hope my screen is visible. Yeah, it is, sir. OK. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Dr. Rahul. Thank you, Shalina, for uh, for providing uh, me this opportunity and providing us uh, an opportunity to connect. And thank you, Doc Mode, for pro uh, giving us this platform. So, friends, uh, today we are going to look at common skin disorders, uh, how we uh, come to diagnosis of various common skin disorders, what are the common presentations of common skin disorders, and how do we manage them. So this will be a more or less pictorial guide so that it helps you, you know, uh, more uh, to to find out how to look at these diseases. Uh, if you look at the outline of this uh, presentation, we are first going to start with the basic anatomy and physiology of the skin. Uh, we will classify the skin disorders. Uh, we'll show you some of the commonly seen skin lesions in the form of a pictorial guide. We will also give you a pictorial representation of certain common diagnoses of the skin conditions like inflammatory disorders. We have eczemas, we have seborrheic dermatitis, we have psoriasis, we have urticaria, we have acne. Then certain infections of the skin like fungal infections, bacterial and viral infections. And then we have some mixed conditions. So sit back and uh, relax and we are going to take you through all this. Now, if we look at skin as an organ, this is the largest organ of the body and it accounts about for about 15% of the total adult body weight. So it's a huge uh, organ system, uh, has many functions, like uh, it acts as a barrier to the insults from the external environment. 
like uh, the uv light like the microbes in the environment like the changes in the temperature etc and other insults uh, it allows transmission of the sensory information it has a significant role to play in uh, maintaining the homeostasis it regulates body temperature it helps us in the synthesis of vitamin d uh, it helps to transmit medications applied on the surface of the skin into the structures beneath so it acts as a conduit it also helps us to maintain the uh, the water content of the body by not allowing trans epidermal water loss so all these functions uh, the and uh, the skin uh, has now anatomically the skin uh, is composed of three major layers the uppermost is the epidermis and is made of of epithelial cells uh, the one beneath that is the dermis and this is constituted of connective tissue uh, within which are embedded uh, live structures like the blood vessels like the hair follicle along with the sebaceous glands or the oil glands and we have the sweat glands all of them we have the sensory nerve endings and other nervous structures all of them are in the dermis and then we have the hypodermis which is the basically the uh, supporting structure uh, for the skin under the dermis and is again constituted of connective tissue and fat tissues let's come to each each of these layers one by one the important layers are epidermis and dermis the epidermis is a very dynamic uh, you know structure in the skin it is composed of these uh, epithelial cells known as the keratinocytes the keratinocytes proliferate rapidly in the basal layer of the epidermis this is the stratum basale they proliferate here more and more are made and then they migrate upwards and as they migrate upwards they change their characteristics they become stratum spinosum here they develop granular structures within themselves and become stratum granulosum here and finally they lose their nuclei and they become flattened uh, dry cells called the corneocytes which are stacked together one upon another uh, to form the stratum corneum and it is this stratum corneum which gives the most resilient uh, you know uh, 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 part to the epidermis and forms the uh, the epidermal barrier to the external envi environmental insults now in addition to the corneocytes which are dead cells here uh, there is an intercellular lipid layer which is present within the stratum corneum and this also provides a uh, uh, provides the barrier function to the skin the two put together the corneocytes in a healthy condition and the intercellular lipids uh, provide the epidermal uh, barrier to the external or insults or external assaults the second layer is the dermis which is the live layer and uh, which is composed of connective tissue and in it are interspersed these organelles we have the hair follicle and its shaft and associated with the hair follicle is the sebaceous gland we have this erector pili, pili muscle each of the hair follicles has this muscle associated we have the sweat glands we have the sensory nerve endings we have other nerve endings the naked nerve endings etc they basically are are useful for transmission of various sensory functions so having said that uh, uh, explain the anatomy of skin let's 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 give you a brief in press it is just diameter next kind of lesion is a pat police together a mac and a plaque here
हाय सुहास sorry for the inconvenience uh, audience we are contacting the speaker there is some technical glitch uh, at dr ganju's site there seems to be some internet issue we are trying to fix it and we will come back soon please uh, stay tuned thank you so much yes sir i'll just uh, let us one okay rahul are you there yeah we can see you sir and where should i start where did i uh, got disconnected uh, we were at uh, first lesion skin lesion slide okay so should i restart from there we have yes. done the anatomy we have done anatomy yeah okay i'm sorry about this i don't know how it happened it's okay okay and uh... okay i'm connected now yeah we can see it now okay so friends uh, i'm sorry about this disconnection we are going back to the common type of skin lesions i'm going to pictorially take you through the common skin lesions uh, these are the kind of uh, presentations you see in the common skin diseases a macule is a flat change in color less than 10 mm in diameter and because it's just flat it is not uh, depressed or it's not raised you can't feel it so it is non palpable change in color less than 10 mm in diameter a papule is a raised lesion less than 10 mm in diameter so uh, because it is raised it can be felt or palpated and it is less than 10 mm in diameter when papules coalesce or form larger lesions of raised or depressed uh, areas of more than 10 mm in diameter they become plaques so small pap small papules getting on into the plaques then we have uh, larger lesions larger tumorous lesions which are deep going into the dermis and even the subcutis in the form of nodules uh, we have vesicles which are small less than 10 mm uh, uh, fluid clear fluid filled lesions uh, which happen uh, usually in viral infections like in chickenpox like in herpes uh, when these vesicles become larger or present as larger lesions they are known as bully a pustule is a vesicle which is filled with pus so uh, a vesicle uh, when filled with clear fluid is vesicle when it's filled with pus it becomes pustule uh, a common fa commonly found condition allergic condition is urticaria which presents as weals in the form of elevated uh, lesions which are, have localized edema and erythema a scale is heaped up accumulation of the horny epithelium as i took you through the anatomy of the skin i told you that the epidermis is a dynamic structure where the basal cells proliferate and move upwards and uh, form the stratum corneum and they are shed from the stratum corneum without us knowing that they are being shed and if they do not sh uh, they are not shed properly or easily they get they get adhered to the skin in the form of a scale as you can see this can be a presentation in some uh, skin conditions <coughs> we have crusts uh, happening on top of skin lesions where there is a little bit of ooze of serum or blood this serum or blood will uh, will get stuck to the skin in the form of crusts uh, erosions are open areas of the skin that have resulted because of the denudation of a little bit of epidermis and if it becomes deeper and involves a little bit of dermis also then it becomes an ulcer atrophic skin is thin skin that appears like a uh, cigarette paper is wrinkled and usually because of thinning of the skin is a part of many skin diseases but nowadays because of inappropriate use of corticosteroids also it happens so corticosteroids ca cause atrophy of the skin as a uh, as a side effect a uh, small pinpoint bleeding into the skin produces what are known as pitiki these pitiki are non blanchable that means you can't dry out the color out of them if you press them with a slide or 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 finger when the pitiki are larger uh, or coalesce together they form what is known as uh, purpura so this is purpura 
uh, and finally a scar is a uh, is uh, is is the replacement of a denuded area of the skin be it because of trauma surgery etc it will heal to form a fibrous tissue uh, in that area which is known as scar the scars are of varied morphology they can be atrophic scars they can be hypertrophic scars they can be keloids now having classified the common types of skin presentations let's classify the common skin conditions we have allergic skin diseases like urticaria we have inflammatory skin diseases like eczemas like psoriasis like acne ichthyosis we have the active skin conditions we have the fungal infections and we have the viral infections now let's deal with them one by one what are eczemas eczemas are inflammatory condition of the skin usually on the skin common in children as uh, what is known as atopic eczema or childhood eczema enteritis malnutrition and remissions happening with change of season with uh, irritation of the skin with wear pollens etc uh, the diagnosis is the exposure to excess on this sensitive skin using synthetic immune all should be as exacerbation of the of the disease all varying kinds uh, we take care of this kind of a problem using tepid warm the most important sorry once again audience uh, i mean this is really unexpected uh, kind of technical uh, uh, glitch which we are facing for the for the first time usually our webinars go very smoothly and the please bear bear with us uh, dr ganju will be back soon So for the audience, they have joined late. Uh, just to quickly revise, Dr. Ganju has started with the basics, uh, that is anatomy and physiology of the skin, starting from uh, the the very basic function of the skin, as well as uh, on anatomical side, different layers, three layers of the skin, and how epid epidermis is so important, how it how it plays a role in the protection, though it is. uh made up of most of the dead cells and then uh we have quickly gone through uh the type of lesions yeah dr ganju is here now i'm sorry i i don't know what is happening uh yeah uh, mm -hmm. i hope will be i have changed my network maybe so where were you we rahul uh we we have the started sir inflammatory skin disorders okay uh 
I'll have to share my screen now. Just a moment. I'm sorry about this. What's happening? So we have started with inflammatory skin disorder. So we are there. Sorry, guys. Uh, just a moment. So in the inflammatory skin disorders, we were talking about eczemas or dermatitis. Eczemas basically happen in dry skins. And as dry skins uh, become excessively dry, they evolve into what are known as eczemas. Eczema is an allergy happening on the dry skin because of aeroallergens, because of contact irritants, because of dryness in the skin per se. And these lesions are usually excessively itchy. Uh, they ooze a little bit of fluid and uh, they are scaly and uh, they need to be moisturized uh, constantly. Uh, it's more common in children and particularly uh, in the form of atopic dermatitis or childhood eczema as it is known as. As I said, it is associated with intense pruritus with, with, uh, with periods of uh, exacerbations and remissions. Uh, possible exacerbating factors are exposure to aeroallergens, uh, pollutants, <coughs> irritation, irritant chemicals, excessive washing, exposure to woolens and synthetic clothing directly on the body, certain foods, emotional stress, all these should be looked for when there are exacerbations happening. Now, childhood eczema or atopic dermatitis is a common presentation in children. And uh, this usually is an inherited uh, uh, defect in the skin barrier function and associated with the very dry skin, which, uh, which is easily attacked by uh, aeroallergens, by microbes, etc. And eczema develops in these skins. These patients can be treated by good use of moisturizers immediately after a bath with tepid water. Now, the moisturizers uh, happen to be a cornerstone in therapy because their basic defect is a dry skin, which is deficient in natural moisturizing factors and, and intercellular lipids. The severely affected skin can be better hydrated by application of the moisturizer on a damp skin and an occlusive layer over that, a dressing or a polythene sheet, etc. So once you have moisturized the skin, in addition to moisturization, you give them antihistamines, you give them anti antibiotics if there is secondary infection. Topical corticosteroids are a very important part of the treatment, but they should not be used for a long period of time. You can go on to, uh, to calcineurin inhibitors topically once the disease is under control. You can give phototherapy. And if the disease is very severe, then steroid st sparing agents like cyclosporin, like azathioprine, mycophenolate, morphetal, et cetera, can be used. Now, Another kind of uh, eczema or dermatitis is the seborrheic dermatitis, which happens over the so-called seborrheic areas of the body. What are the seborrheic areas of the body? These are the ones which are rich in sebaceous glands. That is the oil glands like the scalp, the face, the body folds, the chest, the back, shoulders, etc. Uh, the, the, it commonly happens in adolescents who have excessive oil gland activity, more common in males. <clears throat> Immunodeficient states are associated with higher degrees of seborrheic dermatitis. Certain neurological and psychiatric diseases are associated with more seborrheic dermatitis. Certain drugs can exacerbate, like lithium, grisofulvin, etc. These are the conditions that produce seborrheic dermatitis. Seborrheic dermatitis is treated uh, one by taking care of the seborrhea within the scalp and uh, using shampoos that contain ketoconazole, zinc pyrethione, salicylic acid, and tar which is used frequently. We don't let the seborrhea build up on the skin. Then topically, we use steroids or steroid salicylic acid combinations or uh, steroid and antifungal combinations. This is, the, this is a place when we need to use combinations of steroid and antifungal. Uh, and once the disease is under control, we can use topical calcineurin inhibitors like tacrolimus. Uh, Another inflammatory condition that is very common is psoriasis. Now, psoriasis is an another inherited disorder of, uh, uh, of uh, epithelial keratinization and inflammation. The keratinization is disturbed in the, in the sense that the turnover of the cells within the epidermis is faster than normal so that these cells can't be shed from the surface and they collect at the surface in the form of a plaque and scaling. You can see the scaling and plaque happening. This is basically over you know activity of the epithelium and in addition to that there is inflammation within the underlying dermis and so you can see red flaky crusted uh, patches of skin covering covered with silvery scales the silvery dry scales are very pathognomonic of psoriasis 
So if you see dry silvery scales, think of psoriasis. If you see wet greasy scales, think of eczema. Uh, normally, it involves the extensor aspects of the uh, of the limbs, like the elbows, like the knees, shins, uh, also the scalp, also the lower back. These are the areas, and the possible triggers are injury, infections, uh, stress, and all this happens in those who have a genetic predisposition to develop. Uh, psoriatic lesions and diagnosis is primary clinical rarely do do we require a biopsy so clinically we can make out a patient of psoriasis and uh, you can easily scrape on a skin uh, lesion where you suspect psoriasis and easily uh, uh, silvery dry scales will come off and this is known as uh, grattage sign and uh, if you further scratch at the skin you will produce small bleeders which is known as the auspitz sign so grattage sign auspitz sign easily clinically make out a psoriatic lesion Psoriatic uh, lesions uh, uh, can be can be healed, but psoriasis per se can't be can't be cured because it's a genetic disorder. So you have to counsel the patient that he can have exacerbations and remissions. Once we control the disease, they have to keep on taking care of the skin in the form of proper moisturization, etc. Otherwise, the disease is going to come back. So the treatment consists of proper moisturizing. Uh, with 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 good moisturizers and then using topical corticosteroids, salicylic acid. So steroid salicylic acid combination is very good here. We use uh, vitamin D3 analogs alone or in combination with again betamethasone. We use systemic therapy for severe disease. We use uh, uh, vitamin A analog, uh, escitretin. These are called retinoids. We use drugs like methotrexate, cyclosporine, epimelast, and even biologics and physical modalities like phototherapy also. Now, another common condition in, in uh, your part of the world and our part of the world is acne, which happens because of an excessively oily skin, usually in adolescents. Uh, it's a disorder of the pilosebaceous unit. There is abnormal keratinization within the pilosebaceous unit, and then there is inflammation happening around. The presenting lesions can be comedones. Basically, comedones are blocked uh, you know, uh, uh, hair follicles. You know, which have got blocked because of the collection of keratin within them. They are present as open and closed comedones. And as the lesions evolve, we can have inflammatory papules, we can have pustules, we can have nodules, cysts, and when they heal, they can produce scarring. So all sorts of lesions can be present. The comedones are non-inflammatory and papules, pustules, nodules, cysts are inflammatory. <coughs> the lesions will vary considerably depending upon the duration of the disease. If comedones are present, then it is almost sure that the patient has acne. So uh, if you are you are doubtful about the diagnosis, look for comedones. And if even if you find a few comedones, then the patient is suffering from acne. The women are more commonly affected, which means that hormonal factors have a role to play. So excessive activity of male hormone in women uh, stimulates the oil glands and produces a lot of acne. Uh, these are the common presentations. The treatment consists, if, if you have just in non-inflammatory acne in the form of comedones, you give them topical uh, retinoids like adapalene, retinoic acid, or tretinoin. Uh, and if there is a little bit of inflammation here and there, you can combine it with benzoyl peroxide. So nowadays, combinations of adapalene, benzoyl peroxide, adapalene with an antibiotic like clindamycin, uh, have been have have superseded individual drugs. They produce be better results. So that kind of a combination of an antibiotic and adaplin is used if we have inflammatory lesions. And in more severe disease, we give systemic treatments in the form of uh, systemic retinoids, oral antibiotics, and antiandrogens in women where we are suspecting to be women to have hormonal issues like like cases of PCOD, etc. Uh, diet is has also been found to be important. High glycemic diets have been associated with higher degrees of uh, you know acne or exacerbation of acne. Now another skin condition uh, condition is ichthyosis or excessive dryness, which presents with scales like this. Uh, ichthys basically means uh, fish and refers to cutaneous scaling that is characteristic of these ichthyotic disorders. Uh, there is a decreased ability of the skin. Uh, to protect against bacterial, chemical, and mechanical assault because there is a disturbed barrier. And the, the, the barrier, the skin can't prevent the transepidermal water loss, so it becomes dry, parched. The treatment, again, there no, there's no cure because it's an inherited disorder of dryness. The main goal is to moisturize. So moisturize with a lot of emollients and try to exfoliate with, 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 uh, uh, with uh, uh, products like containing salicylic acid, urea, etc. 
severe cases may have dysregulation of temperature so you need to take care of that secondary infection may happen that has to be taken care of oral retinoids are of a lot of help particularly acetretin uh, can be given to these patients now coming to infective disorders uh, one of the ma major infective superficial skin condition is the fungal infections and they have been on the rise uh, they have come in as an epidemic in the recent past particularly in the indian subcontinent and also over the other develop in the other developing countries uh, the commonly causing agents are dermatophytes like uh, epidermophyton trichophyton and mycosporum they affect the keratinized or the superficial epithelial uh, structures within the skin hair and nails and depending upon the site of involvement we have we classify uh, tinea or superficial fungal infection into tinea capitis of the head fascia of the face barby of the beard area groin is cruris foot is pedis and uh, and so on and so forth uh, the factors that predispose to development of severe disease include immunocompromised state due to drugs due to diabetes old age occlusive and synthetic clothing and footwear overcrowding etc uh, this is a typical lesion of uh, of tinea uh, of the skin or tinea corporis uh, where there is an annular lesion which has a margin which is active and is progressing outwards and the central area has a clearing so this is a very typical lesion of tinea this is almost you know definite clinically uh, uh, tinea now in recent past we have seen that uh, tinea or superficial dermatophytosis has become very common it has it has uh, it has become almost a pandemic about 20 to 25 percent of the population at large worldwide is affected by by fungal infections at one time or the other in their in their uh, lifetime uh, the common uh, agents include trichophyton microsporum and epidermophyton uh, we have seen that families are affected at the same time colonies are affected at the same time this is a common uh, you know site in our clinic this is one of my patients who presented had tinea then i called in the uh, attendants made them disrobe and you can see all of them have the infection so it's tra easily transmitted amongst the family members and uh, the factors responsible for this virulence can be host factors because of the immune cells because of the type of clothing that we wear because of the gene culture we wear too much of gene we wear the same clothing we wear occlusive clothing we wear occlusive footwear drug factors like we usually have fungus static drugs available not fungicidal drugs and the fungal factors there has been a development of fungal resistance also now while treating the fungal infections superficial fungal infections we have to we have to in addition to giving them the drug therapy also look at non -pharm pharmacological measures like we have to encourage them to wear loose fitting garments and clothes cotton socks cotton clothing uh, uh nothing that would promote uh, you know uh, sweating within the folds uh, the areas that become uh, become infected have to be dried completely before wearing clothes uh, uh, the patients are to be told to avoid uh, walking barefoot avoid sharing towels sharing garments with their with their friends and family members which can transmit the disease and these are the commonly used antifungals we we have the polyenes we have the azoles that are commonly used the allylamines like terbinafine azoles like clotrimazole uh, meconazole etc are topical agents oral agents are etraconazole fluconazole or ketoconazole uh, mechanism of action i am not going to go into detail this is the uh, you know common standard therapy for various types of uh, superficial fungal infections uh, if you want i'll sh share this presentation with you through shalina if you want later on i won't go into the details uh, but it is very very important that these patients are counseled properly told about the importance of regular bathing and drying the body parts properly and vigorously laundering the clothes properly washing and storing the clothes separately uh, avoiding sharing clothes towels etc avoiding wearing bands threads rings etc losing weight particularly obese patients because that can cause occlusion and dampness within the folds avoiding contact with pets avoiding topical corticosteroid application as far as possible unless necessary uh, completing the course of treatment uh, uh, and not discontinuing in between and uh, treatment of the household contacts uh, another superficial fungal infection that we come across usually is candidiasis which is caused by uh, the yeast candida albicans it affects skin folds it affects the mucous membranes of the mouth uh, the vagina 
it's not seen usually in healthy individuals generally people who have an immune deficiency like diabetics like pregnancy which is a stressful immune deficiency uh, patients who are on corticosteroids or broad spectrum antibiotics or immunosuppressants newborn babies who get it from their mothers and uh, and uh, 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 these kind of lesions so usually they present as crusted itchy oozing lesions within the folds and there is a presence of satellite lesions the these these four lesions are surrounded by small pustular lesions that break down as you can see in this picture these are called satellite lesions very pathognomonic of candidiasis so look for history of immune suppression drugs that could have caused immune suppression broad spectrum antibiotics uh, mild infection can be treated topically uh, uh, more severe infection you can give oral agents like uh, like uh, etraconazole like fluconazole uh, sometimes antifungal corticosteroid combinations can be used initially to relieve the itching and inflammation with a word of caution that the patient has to be counseled properly not to continue the combination for a long time because that can have side effects so once you have controlled the inflammation you go on to a plain antifungal and proper hygiene etc should be should be maintained uh now coming to bacterial infections these are the common bacterial infections that we come across the common pathogens are staphylococcus and group a beta hemolytic streptococci uh, they can present as furuncles that is uh, hair follicle infection or vesicles or bully filled with pus the common presentations are impetigo which is a superficial uh, infection of the skin cellulitis going deeper down into the subcutis erysipelas again again a deeper infection uh, folliculitis the hair follicle infection erythrasma a superficial uh, spreading infection pitted keratolysis an infection of the uh, palms and soles caused by minisuturmum uh, okay uh, generally you uh, uh, treat these bacterial skin infections by cleansing properly with an antiseptic solution like chlorhexidine that reduces the uh, load of infection minimizes the spread to the surrounding areas uh, for foot infections non occlusive footwear should be given topical antibiotics like mupirocin nadiflox combinations of neomycin bacitracin and uh, polymyxin are very useful and severe disease can be treated with uh, oral agents like uh, uh, cephalosporin like erythromycin like cloxacillin rifampicin isoniazid minocycline etc now common viral infections present with vesicles or uh, like in herpes like in chickenpox and we can have human papilloma virus infection in the form presenting in the form of warts usually on the fingers hands and feet uh, so these are warts they present as hard lesions and these are vesicles presenting in herpes and uh, and uh, uh, ch chickenpox uh, so uh, in in viral infections like herpes chickenpox and herpes zoster we give acyclovir uh, in severe disease and systemic in uh, spread we give intravenous acyclovir also uh, the newer antivirals which have a longer duration of action like uh, famcyclovir or cy valacyclovir can be given at a longer duration so have become useful in the treatment of of uh, viral infections now mixed skin infection skin conditions are common it has been seen that uh, that uh, infection is prevalent in all kinds of inflammatory skin diseases a study found that staph aureus was found in 60% of the psoriatic patches 88% of the atopic skin conditions and 100% of the erythroderma patients so uh, wherever there is skin inflammatory condition secondary infection due to staph aureus is common even uh, fungal infections are common in uh, nails affected by psoriasis compared to healthy there is a three fold increase in candida infection in patients who have uh, immune deficient states like dermatomyositis like bullous pemphigoid uh, tinea unguale like condylometa acuminata and candida infection is more common in urticarias in bullous pemphigoid patients so overall the uh, the likelihood of secondary infection is very very common in patients who have some kind of inflammatory skin disorder the mechanism of uh, secondary infection in inflammatory skin disorder is a disturbance of the skin barrier function because of disruption of the superficial layer disturbance of the normal skin homeostasis deficiency of antimicrobial peptides in these dry deficient skins and triggering of the imma, innate immune response uh, because of this infection these inflammatory conditions also get exacerbated for example atopic dermatitis and psoriasis uh, because of colonization with staphylococcus aureus 
can be associated with more severe disease so so patients of uh, of atopic dermatitis need to be uh, treated with combinations of steroids and antibiotics to take care of the secondary infection uh, that can cause exacerbation of the disease and similarly for for patients of psoriasis we have to treat with combinations so dear friends to conclude uh, we need to be uh, aware of the common skin disorders at all levels of health system uh, in the lesser developed countries at the primary health level care uh, management of common skin disorders uh, would benefit if a proper uh, diagnosis and prompt treatment is given right in the beginning so you need to be aware of the common presentations of skin disorders the common kinds of skin diseases the common associations of bacterial infections and fungal infections super added uh, uh, so we need to address this issue uh, at the correct point it's it's extremely essential to do that and uh, a total comprehensive approach needs to be involved in the risk assessment prevention and controlling measures to monitor these conditions we need to educate our primary health uh, uh, healthcare workers about about the uh, possibility of this this disease picking up these diseases uh, right in the beginning so that they can be taken care of and if needed referred to a skin specialist so that that makes things cost effective that makes uh, you know uh, most of the patients taken care of at primary health care uh, level and and only a fraction of the patients referred for care to the higher centers thank you very much friends uh, i am open to questions if there are any dr rahul yeah yeah thank you sir thank you for your uh, excellent presentation uh, i can understand uh, sir you have tried to accommodate as much information as possible in this in this brief presentation and we can also understand that it is difficult to uh, difficult to get everything about dermatology in in such a small uh, it's too vast yeah it is it is vast right uh, but at the same time i would like to convey to our audience that uh, we will share the link of recorded uh, video uh, recorded file of this webinar so that you can go through uh if you want you can go through all this uh information you can go through the images which dr ganzu has used very wisely uh and uh, thanks again sir and i'm sure th this brief uh, training uh, should help our audience in the diagnosis and treatment of very commonly seen uh, dermatological diseases so let us move to uh, question and answer session where i would like to request dr ganzu to uh respond to some of the queries raised by our audience uh well first question is related to the burning issue of covid-19 uh sir which are the skin manifestations they are associated with covid-19 uh basically we would like to know guiding tips from you for our audience suppose if they see any any covid-19 patient with some some of the skin manifestations with no other or very mild other symptoms of covid-19 so which are the markers indicators you would like to uh, inform to the audience so that they can suspect this as a covid-19 okay covid-19 is something very new and we are learning new things every day about this disease and its association with skin lesions but what has uh, you, you know been mentioned and what we have come across till now is that these patients can present as a simple maculopapular rash on the skin and no other symptom of covid so these days if you have a maculopapular rash you have to you know ask for history and look for you know signs and other signs and symptoms suggestive of this disease then patients can present with an urticarial rash sometimes some patients present with an chickenpox like rash and it's not chickenpox it is actually covid but the good thing about skin rashes associated with covid is that they are usually very self limiting within 2 3 days 4 days they'll settle down they don't need much of treatment but there are more serious manifestations uh, of covid on skin like uh, we can have because of the thromboembolic phenomena we can have you know uh, 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 vascular lesions within the skin so uh, vasculitic lesions can happen and vascular occlusive lesions can happen there can be gangrene of the uh, peripheral digits or fingers or uh, uh, toes happening uh that can be more severe as far as skin is concerned but thromboembolic phenomena can can affect more organs also 
in addition hair loss following uh, following uh, covid is very very common and very severe uh, after the patient recovers from covid up to about 6 months to a year they'll keep on you know complaining of uh, hair loss very difficult to control so these are the common uh, skin presentations that uh, covid is associated with right sir uh well next question is related to the condition which uh, i i don't think we have covered that is vitiligo so which are which are the common treatment options for vitiligo as well as sunburn caused uh, by vitiligo okay vitiligo is again an inherited disorder of uh, of uh, an in, auto, an auto inflammatory or autoimmune disorder which is associated with destruction of the melanocytes which are the normal color producing cells within the uh, epidermis Uh, these are called melanocytes and are present in the basal layer of the epidermis so once they become destroyed uh, they cannot produce melanin and so the color is lost so they present as white patches so there are two stages that vitiligo is in one is the progressive phase when more and more melanocytes are being destroyed the disease is active and uh, there are more and more lesions happening or the older lesions are becoming larger so at this stage we need to give them immunosuppressive drugs to control the progression of the autoimmune condition where we use corticosteroids orally usually in a pulse form uh, sometimes if we need higher doses of steroids or disease is more aggressive then we would not want to give too many steroids then we give them steroid sparing agents like azathioprine we give them uh, uh, mycophilinate mofetil uh, we can even give them methotrexate so uh, uh, that is when the disease is in progression in addition to topical corticosteroids topical uh, calcineurin inhibitors so that's one part of the treatment to control and uh, uh, block the disease progression the other part is bringing back the pigment for bringing back the pigment we depend on the melanocytes that are left in the hair follicles and they are stimulated to produce pigment which spreads to the affected skin which is done with either phototherapy uh, ultraviolet b therapy uh, narrow band ultraviolet b therapy in the range of 308 to 310 nanometers so we have machines or ultraviolet chambers but for resource poor situations we give them oral sorolins and exposed to sunlight after 2 hours uh, for about 5 minutes 2 uh, to 3 times a week uh, that gives equally good effects this is known as oral sora um, uh, oral uh, uh, uv therapy with sorolins uh, uh, or oral puvasol so uh, we give uh, we give uh, uh, or oral uh, sorolins which make the skin sensitive and the melanocytes sensitive to the sunlight two hours later we exposed to sun and then that produces the pigment and uh, spreads the pigment so that is two stages of it like another stage is a stable stage from where we can't move on the pigment is there's no melanocyte left uh, you know to uh, be stimulated and produce pigment so at that stage we need to resort to surgical therapy so if the disease is stable is not improving further then we resort to surgical uh, you know uh, procedures we bring melanocytes from another place and uh, transplant them in these uh, uh, deep pigmented areas those melanocytes then spread and produce the pigment so uh, this is in nutshell what we do for vitiligo right sir Uh, yeah there was one more thing that they asked was the sunburns in patients of vitiligo so once the once the skin is deficient in melanin it is uh, it is super sensitive to sun so they have to protect their skin from uh, from uh, damage due to sun so these patients need to pro- uh, use sunscreens whenever they go go out or use clothing that covers most of their uh, skin patches these patches are uh, very vulnerable to damage due to sun so sunscreens in those situations right sir uh, next question is related to hpv uh, how does hpv 16 or hpv 11 present on the skin so i showed some uh, some lesions in the form of warts uh, uh, which were produced by human papilloma virus certain strains of warts uh, uh, human papilloma virus are associated with warts on the skin the others are associated with the warts genital warts and some of them 6 and 11 as has been mentioned are associated with development of malignancy also later on so uh, these all these uh, human papilloma viruses produce warts at different uh, areas in the skin the ones that i showed on the skin are usually not pre malignant but certain types of uh, uh, venereal warts or the genital warts 
are uh, pre-malignant and need to be treated or prevented properly to prevent development of malignancy. Okay. And sir, uh, we have seen during presentation that uh, bacterial infections or fungal infections, they are uh, they are present, they are in coexistence with inflammatory skin disorders. Like we have seen during uh, the presentation that bacterial skin infections are sometimes as high as 80%. And fungal skin infection is as as high as fifty percent as per that study. So, what is your uh, take, sir? What is your recommendation for treating such mixed skin conditions? Uh, you see, inflammatory conditions like atopic dermatitis uh, is usually associated with secondary bacterial infection, and bacterial infection in turn causes exacerbation of the basic disease. So we have to keep this in mind and if we are using, for example, a topical corticosteroid for atopic dermatitis or atopic eczema, then always combine it with an antibiotic. So a combination of uh, uh, steroid and antibiotic would be very useful in a situation where uh, where there is a possibility of secondary infection like atopic dermatitis. Even psoriatic skins are associated with uh, with uh, super added uh, bacterial infection and, and they get exacerbated because of the carbonization of the lesions. And this is called you know, carbonization due to super antigen. The, the, the infective agent has antigens within it that can stimulate the disease process per se. So controlling the infection is important. So use steroids, use uh, salicylic acid and also use antibiotics. So combinations in this situation of steroids, uh, antibiotic and salicylic acid are very useful. So uh, we have to keep in mind the possibility of secondary infection happening and the infection exacerbating the basic disease. So, so mixed infections or mixed conditions should be treated with combinations of uh, drugs. Right, sir. And sir, uh, what could be the safest treatment or management option for uh, babies nappy rashes uh, you see they basically uh, this is basically start as irritant dermatitis they uh, and then secondarily uh, a yeast infection candida infection is com commonly associated with this so it's a dermatitis with and with fungal infection so usually a combination of antifungal and steroid initially and you can use uh, cream soothing creams containing zinc oxide uh, uh is very useful and emollients are very useful and avoiding uh, too much of wet conditions keeping the area dry is what is useful okay and uh, so dr richard would like to know that uh, which could be the best treatment for recurrent chancre recurrent chancre yeah does he, does he mean uh, se uh, secondary syphilis yeah, genital ulcer, sir. Okay. See, uh, syphilis uh, is usually not recurrent in the form of a, a you know a same lesion. Uh, if you are talking about chancre of syphilis, syphilis is treated uh, once it is diagnosed properly and uh, good treatment with the benzathine penicillin. Three injections given at weekly intervals uh, gives complete cure of the disease. Uh, and uh, and or if a patient has allergy to penicillin, then you may give. Uh, oral tetracyclines or oral azithromycin for a period of 15 days to three weeks. But generally, these patients respond well to uh, injectable uh, benzathine penicillin. Okay. And uh, for long term treatment of fungal infections, sir, which could be the appropriate therapy in case of long term therapy? You see, uh, they usually do not require long term pharmacological therapy. So you give pharmacological therapy. Uh, oral and topical for at least two weeks after the complete clearance because what happens uh, clinically they get better very soon but uh, but dermato dermatophytically uh, or microbiologically they do not get cured completely at that time so the patients use drugs for maybe about two weeks they feel better and they leave the medicine then there is a relapse actually the fungus is still there so it is recommended that either you do a fungal culture from the area and then stop medication or continue medication for at least two weeks after the clinical cure has happened. So one is that continue drugs up, up till two weeks after the clinical cure. And even after that, these patients who are prone to fungal infections have to take care of their skin. They have to keep these areas very dry. They have to uh, you know, use, uh, use soaps that are not very harsh. They can use emollients so, so that the skin remains healthy and is not easily vulnerable to uh, invasion due to fungus. 
after after their cure has happened so usually you don't require long term anti fungal therapy but if you do require the safer uh, variety is safer anti fungal would be a fluconazole given once a week maybe in 150 to 300 mg dose for a longer period of time uh, giving etoconazole giving uh, giving terbinafen for a long period of time is not a good idea okay uh, and sir which is which is the or which are the indicators uh, you know if any patient uh, is on topical antifungal and may be not responding or condition is becoming severe which is the indicator then uh, that a physician can start maybe oral antifungal therapy see if the disease is widespread is present at multiple spots uh, is severe is recalcitrant has happened you know as a relapse then then oral medication definitely is uh, is uh, required uh, topical therapy is limited to localized lesion uh, not very widespread a single lesion or one or two lesions uh, we give topical therapy so to begin with only nowadays because we come across severe infections we give them oral as well as topical uh, a good practice is using an, a different class of drug orally and a different class of topical antifungal for example if you are using an azole like etoconazole orally you may use a, a different drug like not an azole topically you may use cyclopiroxolamine uh, topically or amrolfin topically whose mechanism of action is different so you will probably get a synergistic action between the two in addition to uh, antifungals uh, maintaining a good barrier function with a good moisturizer is very important uh, maintaining the area very dry is important avoiding occlusive clothing Uh, and footwear is important washing the clothes daily is important using a fresh dry towel every time you take a bath is important avoiding jeans tight fitting clothes heavy clothing is important so all this these factors in addition to the pharmacological factors are to be taken into account right uh, so there is a small case from zambia uh, though i don't have any image for this uh, a boy born with red patches on the upper lip eyelid and small portion on the forehead plus back of the neck what could be the probable diagnosis uh red patches uh, what kind of red patches are they are they dry are they oozing but if if it is if the boy is born with it it could be a port wine stain a red patch it could be a hemangioma usually a vascular anomaly it could be a hemangioma uh in the first year of life hemangiomas but involute after about uh, within uh, within the first year of life they become smaller and smaller and by by about uh, you know 7 years of age they they uh, first year they proliferate sorry and from first year to 7 years they they involute and uh, go to a considerable extent but port wine stains which i feel is what uh, they have seen or asked uh, usually stay and uh, do not go uh, can be treated partially with lasers not fully though uh, later on in the life we have pulse dye lasers for such kind of lesions okay uh, and so next question is related to uh, the what is the best presentation of medications for skin disease of the armpit you see if you if you really uh, need to treat a condition properly you need to look at the skin lesion and try to come to a diagnosis rather than uh, use a general drug so if you if you if you see the lesion and you feel that it is fungal preferably a, a plain antifungal but if it is associated with too much of inflammation maybe initially a combination of steroid and antifungal and then try to uh, taper it off or stop it as soon as possible and give a, a lone antifungal you have to use uh, steroids with great caution because we have had problems using steroids for a long period of time so be very proactive if you at all and counsel your patient properly if at all you are using combination therapy tell them to use it as long as you want them to use it and they have to come back give if you are dispensing it give the, give a very small pack so that they come back uh, you know uh, uh, soon uh, or if 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 you are only if you are sure that it's not available over the counter for a long period of time otherwise it gets misused so caution is use it for a short period of time and then discontinue and then be on a uh, plain antifungal rather than a combination right sir uh, and sir we have discussed that uh, these infective skin disorders like bacterial or fungal they are so common 
and which is one of the common presentation to primary healthcare providers. So, uh, in your opinion, sir, which are which are two or three compelling differentiators uh, for skin bacterial and skin fungal infections? You see, bacterial infection will usually be associated with pus, with vesicles, with oozing lesions, while as fungal infections generally will be dry. Uh, a superficial dermatophytic infection will be annular, uh, will have a central clearing, it will be dry, it will have a, a prominent edge which is progressing slowly, there will be central clearance, but the bacterial infection will be a diffuse, oozing, crusty lesion, uh, will have sometimes pus in it. So that's how you differentiate and fungal infections generally happen and start in the folds and then spread on to the rest of the body. Uh, they can be present within the toe webs and then spread to the rest of the body. Bacterial infections can happen anywhere. Right. Now, sir, I will just take up last two questions. Uh, how do we treat lichen planus, especially that uh, that one that is known as oral LP? Okay. Oral LP, uh, if it is extensive, needs to be treated with uh, oral steroids, which we generally give in a pulse form. Uh, we give it twice a week or we can use other steroid sparing agents. Cyclosporin is a very good alternative to steroids. They respond very well to cyclosporin, to azathioprine and topically also we use uh, steroids. Uh, we have uh, 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 various aura bases available with steroids in them like trimcinolone we have. Uh, which can be applied and stays on the surface of the skin. You have to make, uh, sorry, mucosa. You have to make sure that uh, after application for at least half an hour, the patient does not eat anything so that it's not washed off. And uh, generally they do well. There are a few uh, varieties of oral lichen planus, uh, like erosive lichen planus, you have to be careful about. It's a pre-malignant condition and rarely it can go on to develop into a malignancy. So uh, a, a erosive lichen planus, you have to be very aggressive on treatment. Try to treat it with as much might as is possible. Give them oral steroids, give them a cyclosporin and try to bring the condition under control fast so that it does not progress on to malignancy. Okay, and the last one, sir, uh, is from Dr. Fatima. Uh, it is kind of small case again, though I don't have much information. Uh, here in the question is that a patient with whitish whitish spot on the skin, no pain, no itching, but the size of the spot uh, increases. So your suggestions, please. See, this is very vague. White spot can be deep pigmented. If it is deep pigmented, like it has lost complete color and is shiny white, then the diagnosis goes towards vitiligo. If it is hypopigmented, the lesion is you know low in color but not has not lost all the, then it can be post-inflammatory hypopigmentation. That is, some kind of inflammation happened, it healed, it left some kind of uh, de decreased pigmentation. It can even be leprosy. You see leprosy presents as hypopigmented patches slowly increasing in size, in which case you have to look for loss of sensation over the area. You have to look for local nerves. You have to look for ulnar nerves. If they are thick and painful, then you can make a diagnosis of leprosy. And then uh, these kind of lesions like leprosy, etc., are diagnosed fully on the basis of uh, histopathological examination. So you need to do a biopsy. But generally, clinically, you can easily make out vitiligo from other lesions. Vitiligo is uh, is is bright white, milky white because it has lost complete pigment, while as other lesions are hypopigmented. And sometimes, if you have uh, if you have doubt in the diagnosis of a hypopigmented lesion, you do a biopsy and confirm. Right, sir. Thank you once again, sir, uh, for for very informative session which you have delivered today. And Thank uh, you. I would also like to uh, convey our sincere thanks to uh, all professional bodies from Nigeria and Kenya for accrediting this webinar with CPD and C, uh, CME points. Uh, and uh, once again, thanks to our audience for, for taking time from your busy schedule in attending our uh, webinar, which we are running through a series of webinar, uh, which we have started during this pandemic time. Uh, and I'm sure it is uh, it is helping you to get updated and uh, it is helping you to provide some new learnings, not just from different countries, but across the different continents. So as mentioned before, audience, 
uh, we will share the link of recorded uh, video recorded webinar and uh, that you can go through maybe uh, afterwards you can share to your colleagues so not just this webinar but you can get access to previous webinars also and very soon we'll keep you posted and we'll keep you informed about our next webinars through email and through uh, flyers thank you so much thank you dr rahul and thank you audience for connecting it was a pleasure thank you sir